Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. So we have this empty space here in our family room and my wife wants to put a like entry uh, console table here. So she picked one out online. I'll put a picture of it right here uh, so you guys can check it out. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and build this out of basically just framing lumber. Uh, two by fours, uh, one by fours, and then a couple two by sixes. Um, so I'll take you along the process. But since I've been doing YouTube videos, I wanted to try the, you know, the YouTube trick where you just snap and then it's built. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that to work here. Wow! That actually worked! Alright, but in all seriousness, let's get to building here. Alright, so here's a quick tip for you. We're going to cut the legs. Uh, we want it to be 32 inches overall height. So we're going to have an inch and a half, uh, two by six on top. So the best way to go about this for the quickest, most accurate results is to set up a stop. So we're going to want to measure, let me grab my tape measure, there we go, 30 and a half. Now luckily I have this miter saw stand, which is helpful. So we'll set this up. Three and a half right there. Now we want to bring in the saw stop here. And raise it up. Hold that there, butt that up against it. Lock this in. All right, so now we can go ahead and cut all four legs. We'll just slide it right into the stop here, make the cut for all four of them. We know that they'll be exactly the same length and we'll be good to go on that one. All right, so we got our legs and both of our cross pieces cut. So now it's gonna be time to start assembling. Then we'll cut the cross pieces and the bottom and the top of the piece here. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the crag tool to do all these joints. So the bottom shelf, I'm gonna put four inches off the ground. So I cut a spacer block here. That's the best way to keep everything uniform so that you don't have variations in the shelf from side to side. Uh, anyway, that does not have this pocket hole tool, should definitely go and get one. I got mine at Lowe's, I think it was, and it was a special that they ran. You got this kit and then you got the clamp for free. I think it was $20 for everything. And it's a lifesaver. I used it a ton since I've gotten it. So let's go ahead, drill some uh, pocket holes here and we'll start assembly. What we're going to do is we're going to assemble the legs so it's going to be a piece here with the pocket holes which will be covered by the top so you'll never see them we'll glue and screw the joint and then we're going to also put another one let's turn you over here so you can see we're going to put another one down here and we have our four inch spacer block so we'll slide this up and then again so we'll glue and screw these together like I said we'll do the other leg here 
and then we can put the stretcher pieces which go in between uh, to set the, the length of the piece. Then we can start putting the cross pieces and the top on. So let's go ahead and screw this together. All right guys, so it's a new day here. Um, I already got the top done, I didn't really have time to film it. So all I did was rip three two by sixes to five inches in width. And then I put some, you can see here, some pocket holes to hold the three together and I just finished sanding it. So the frame's done, the top's done. Um, these slats are ready to go. I have to sand those. Um, and we need to go about this in the right way because sometimes I assemble everything and then trying to stain down in these cracks here is really hard when the boards are nailed in. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain the frame first. Then I'm going to nail these slats in once they're stained as well. It'll make it so much easier than trying to get into these small cracks here. So um, the last thing we need to do as far as cutting is concerned is cut the braces for the X here. So instead of measuring, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it up here and then mark it with a pencil on the back side that'll tell me exactly the angles that I need to make the X. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we can do the finish sanding on everything, get the stain on it, and then it'll be done. All right, so now we got our angle without having to do any kind of math or uh you know, have an angle fine or anything like that. So let's go ahead and cut these angles, test fit it and see how it goes. Then we'll cut the other uh, cross beams here and go from there. So I just realized that I put the angles on wrong because if I put it like this, that's not what we're going for. We want it to be like this. So let's go ahead and hold it back up here. Line it up. All right, now let's try it. Nice cut. All right, so we got both of our main cross pieces in. As you can see, that technique worked pretty good. Um, now I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with those, hold up another two by four from here down to here, mark out where this intersection is so that it'll go from here, butt into that, and then again, start here and then butt into the bottom to make the full X. So. Let's go ahead and make those cuts. Then we'll be all done cutting. Then, like I said, we'll do the finished sanding, um, stain down the bottom here so that we don't have any issues trying to get in the cracks. Then we'll put the slats on and then we'll be all finished up here. All right, so I got the X crosses in. Uh, I think if I was going to do this again, I would delete the X's because that was a pain in my ass. Um, I think that the 2x4s look a little too bulky, so I think what I'm going to do is throw them through the table saw and bring them down to 2x3s. Uh, in the picture, they use 2x3s, but whenever I look at Home Depot or Lowe's, the 2x3s are always so twisted that I just got 2x4s 
uh, with the intention of ripping them down to two by threes because I just think it looks a little too bulky here. So let's go ahead through them through the table saw. Then we can do the finish sanding on these pieces. The top's already done. The frame is done. So the only thing I have to sand is the cross pieces and the bottom slats here. Then we can start the staining and then we'll be uh, all finished up here. So let's throw these through the table saw and move on. All right, so I changed my mind. Instead of sanding all that stuff right now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stain the bottom of this and then stain uh, underneath where the slats are gonna be. That way, the stain can have time to dry while I'm sanding the slats. Then as soon as I'm done that, I can start assembling it and finish all the rest of the staining. So let's go ahead and get the bottom and then the bottom of this stained. Um, then we'll finish the sanding and complete the assembly. If anybody's wondering what stain I'm using, I'm using Minwax uh, Special Walnut. That's pretty much what we use in everything in our house, and we like the color. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this done here. So we got everything stained. We're finally to the point of doing the final install of all the parts. So I put this board up in the front here. This is going to be the front of the cabinet. This will be the back. Uh, I put this in the front so that I can just slide these butt up against it. That way I ensure myself that I have a nice straight line across the front. Um, I have these spaced evenly out. What I did is I used my speed square. I will just slide that in there and then I'll pack nail them in. I'm going to use my Ryobi battery powered nail gun. If you guys do woodworking projects and you don't already have this, it's definitely worth the investment. Um, I have the pneumatic ones, but this is so much easier not having the cord and the air compressor and all. So let's go ahead and tack these in and then we'll put the X's in. Uh, then the only other thing to do is screw on the top and then we'll be done. Alright, so I already test fitted this to make sure that it fits good. Uh, we got this in here. I'll center it on. And we're just going to tack it in with this Ryobi gun again. Thank you. 
one X done, now we'll get the other one done. All right, the X's are done. Now I just gotta screw the top on and then we're all set. All right guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is a nice little build. It cost me right around $45 to build this, whereas in a store it'd probably be somewhere around 150 to 200, I would imagine, um, for this rustic farmhouse style uh, enter table here. So uh, I hope you learned something from the video and we'll uh, keep up these builds and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.